when when did you first try any drugs? Kid, ten when you were years a kid? old, nine years old. What kind of shit? Smoking and drinking. Then as I got older, I tried acid. How old were you when you first tried acid? Probably eleven. And when you came around, all of a sudden, everybody's watching heavyweight boxing. Sometimes, um, when it comes to my realization of the situation, I forget that I'm that guy. I forget that I trained that hard and I became a fighter and stuff. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you. Does it seem like a dream? Yeah, pretty much like a blur. You're reflecting yourself to discover who you really are. Yeah. When you're 20 years old and all of a sudden you're the heavyweight champion of the world, just a few years ago you were poor, and now all of a sudden you're the king of the world. That's really crazy. You know, so young, it's really crazy. I, I was, I, I was unable to handle it. I wasn't expecting that. That was a really sucker punch right there. You know, when you're a kid, your mother gives you liquor and marijuana for you, make you think that you're gonna go to sleep or something. Yeah, no. my mother was an alcoholic. And stuff. Damn, that's that's harsh. It's hard for some people like yourself that did grow up in an environment like that to ever reach where you're at right now, just a place of peace. And if you can do that through marijuana. Or whatever it is, yoga, meditation, whatever whatever you do to get there. Like, we should be happy that you can get there. That's I'm, what we I'm want. Listen, I am so grateful that um, I embarked on this. You know, I've never been a person to this at its magnitude, at this kind of relaxation. I just enjoying my time with you. I was very uptight. I didn't, at any time, I was very uncomfortable with myself. Did you feel any better after you worked out when you were young like that? The best thing that ever happened to me that I retired from boxing because me working out and me getting out, I was so intense with this. My whole my whole objective was hurting people and wanting to be the best and my ego took over and I'm right. like Tyson, I'm the best to ever live and all this bullshit. Do all those things, they, they give you perspective. It's almost like you're dying, you're, 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 you're submissive, you're humble, you know what I mean, you're vulnerable, but you're invincible still in all you know it's just mm. that weird feeling but you feel like you're part of the universe when you're, you're separate from your ego you realize this whole thing you're a part of this whole thing and this whole thing is unstoppable it's just it's a gigantic huge all-encompassing almost like a, a living thing life. you know Joan this is what I also realized too after going through that experience you realize how insignificant you are sometimes without your ego yes you know you realize yeah. why you're not really much that you really thought you were you are and you aren't. Obviously you are in everyday life. I mean, you go places, you have a dramatic effect on people. You mean a lot. You mean a lot to those people that you run into. You mean a lot to the people that you love and that love you. But we all do. It's all relative. No one is irreplaceable, but everyone is special to someone or something, and at least to themselves. Mm -hmm. But we're all the same. We're all a part of this weird, crazy, gigantic organism that's the human race. My, my mentor, Customato, his objective was to think of nothing. You're nothing, nothing's nothing but the objective, the job. Mm. And that was his psychological warfare. You know, nothing matters. You're nothing, nothing. My only thing that matters is the objective. And getting mm. through, accomplishing that objective by going through these methods of boxing. When was the first time you did coke? I don't know. I was a kid, 11, 12. Shit. I, I got involved with drugs early in life. I was still living in um, Brooklyn when I first did cocaine. I would never let my children, I have a 10 year old daughter and eight year olds, I would never let them live the life that I live. I would hate that. I would always fight so hard. I never want them to be in the environment that I grew up in. Of course. You have the benefit of having gone through it. You know, no one else could ever understand how difficult any of your life must have been for you. It's got to be one of the harder things. When, when you did that documentary, it's an amazing documentary. You're very honest and, and you're very open about all your experiences. And the one thing I took away after that, like, no one can understand. You could you could hear a guy talk like this. I could hear you say these things. I could see the videos of your fights, see the videos of your experience. But to understand the life that you lived, it's impossible. To, it's just a guess. It's like a guess for someone like me from the outside. It's just really interesting. I used to look at it, think about this young kid from Brooklyn, New York, comes to Custom Auto at 13, 12, you know, and all of a sudden, all of a sudden I have a low self-esteem, this guy gives me this big fucking ego. You know what I mean? I live by the rules of that ego and, that's, and I've accomplished so much. Shame inspires a lot of success. Shame, pain. Exactly. Feeling of being left out, feeling of not belonging. And you got if I do this, I'm gonna be, everybody's gonna love me. Yeah. Crazy yeah. feeling. If you wanna be accepted so badly. Yeah. Imagine that, you wanna be accepted. People will look at you. I describe it for a lot of people, it's like resetting a computer. You reset a computer, you have a fresh new desktop. And there's only one folder on the desktop, and that folder says, my old bullshit. I'm saying to myself right now, sometimes I wonder, this new feeling that I'm possessing right now, is it um, a real feeling, does this stuff really help? Am I lying to myself again? 
till the next moment, that next feeling come to do some drugs or to be with somebody else. And what's really going on? Is that feeling going to come back? Because yeah. at this moment, it's that feeling feel like it's never coming back. It can never come back if you decide yeah. that it's never coming back. But you have to make that decision pretty much every day. But you can, you can never come back if you want. Or you could slip into the old ways. That's what a lot of people do. When, when a lot of people fall into drug addictions, relapsing, when they relapse, they're not physically addicted when they're relapsed. Obviously, they're clean. Mm -hmm. And then they decide to go back in. It's because there's comfort in those old patterns. Because this new way of life is just, they get anxiety. They feel like it's a lot of pressure to stay clean. Oh, so explain it. I yeah. hate that. I always hated that. Oh, wait, I never wanted to do right. drugs. But then I do them again. Yeah. I never wanted I hate it. Oh, no, no. Yeah. It spoke to me more than any other music I had ever heard before, you know. I was never really good at much else, you know. So I just, I don't know. Once I found out.